those five reasons to read. There may be more there than you know. So on the screen, you see a little character that I created. His name is Carney the Bookworm. And he'll be throughout the presentation. So he may have to ask you some questions moving forward. So the first reason why you should read is studies have shown that it boosts your brain power. And I have a couple of little examples here. So it's like training for a race. The more you run, the more you can run. So a lot of times people say that I'm not a very good reader, but the truth is the more you read, the better you read. And then um, it just helps you with thinking in general. And it makes it easier for you to solve problems. You come up with ideas better the more you read. And then it, it increases your vocabulary. So have you ever had that moment where you were trying to think of a word and like all these different words come into your head but none of them are quite the word that you're thinking of? Well, just by reading, you get exposed to a lot more words. You might see a word used in context. You're like, I've never used that word before. I could use that. Well, you get that from reading. And so like down here, I have my little statement. And I'm like, the more you read, the more you're exposed to get different words. Cool, great, superb, right? All of those words fit there. So I've been exposed to all those words from reading. The next is improving memory. So I have a little joke here about how Hollywood makes it seem like you can control your memories and recall things. Have you ever watched like a crime drama where they have the person like close their eyes and think back and recall like a perfect vivid memory? Actual memory doesn't work that well, but it's a nice idea. But when you read on a regular basis, it does actually increase your capacity to hold memories and recall vivid details. So that's one thing that reading can actually help you do because the actual human memory isn't that strong to begin with. So here's a quick brain break for any of you out there. Can you share the last three books that you read? No? Okay. Okay. Perfect. Anyone else? I said I love Ender's Game. I mean, the other two books are good too, but I really love Ender's Game. Yeah, but the crazy thing about that is that simple question. Some people have trouble with that because they know that they may have read three books, but they can't remember the last three books that they read. So, thus, reading will help boost that memory recall. All right, so reading is good for gaining inspiration and motivation. Um, while readers aren't usually the life of the party, they do get around. They tend to travel more, speak more languages, try new things, and make more calculated risks. So people who have read books and have traveled the world in their mind are more likely to get out and actually travel the world in real life. And then being an avid or regular reader will make you a better communicator. Um, you, you use all that stuff that I mentioned before, motivation, vocabulary, brain power, and it just makes you communicate ideas better. And if you're a writer, it makes you a better writer. Overall, readers may not be chatty, but when they have something to say, they say it well. A lot of times people think that communication is all about speaking, but it's more than that. It's word choice, it's body language, it's tone. Hand motions, yes. So I probably look a little nervous up here right now. But yeah, when you read a lot, you get to pick up on some of those um, communication skills by the way things are described in the book. And you can't really get that experience if you're not reading. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and then it also enhances imagination and spreads ideas. Well, you know, books are the written word, first of all. Let's take it back a little bit. The written word records history, and we use that moving forward. So books record history, ideas, concepts, they can capture moments, smells, textures, and they can greatly allow for cultivating creativity. 
So a lot of times, you know, you meet someone who you ask them to come up with an idea and they're just like, I don't have any ideas. You probably should be reading a little bit more. <laughs> because when you read, something in your brain just clicks and you take that, that creativity that's written down onto those pages and it goes into your brain and you have the ability to come up with ideas of your own. And then you can spread ideas. Books start revolutions, they end tyranny, they raise generations, open minds, reveal secrets, and pave the way for the future. So when I was growing up, my favorite children's series was Ramona um, by Beverly Cleary. And all the, all the girls that I grew up with at that you know, particular time and where I grew up were all reading that book. That book helped raise us. So that's what I'm saying about reading can help spread those ideas. Everything, that whole tomboy thing that we got from Ramona became part of us. That idea was implanted in us and it carried with us through adulthood. So here's another brain break. Can you share one thing that a book taught you or inspired you to do? Which series? The, the Orchard Stuff Cards series. I haven't read the whole series. Mr. Carr, he goes through this series and he's writing these books. He writes a lot of these different books. And they have lots of different, very different systems. Exactly. Lots and lots and lots of different like ways to see the world. Not just being smart and not being smart and, you know, being from the country or being from the city, but like the um, religious things, you know. And he writes them. That's that's amazing. That's actually what we're leading into next. Something that you can get from books. That was wonderful. Did you want to share something? Oh uh, yeah, I did think of something. This is kind of a while ago, but it's still much in the works. But okay. my friend shared with me a book, and I forget the name, but it was a very heavily regarded to like sci-fi. Okay. And it was inspired me to attempt to create a card game with some of my friends that I'm doing. I'm trying to like sell it. So, that's good. See, you were inspired to make a game. I love that. That's awesome. It's still very, very prototype. <laughs> right. At least you're working on that. Yeah. All right. So, reading reduces stress. Um, so here I'm talking about you know you've got your glass of wine and you're listening to music and you're trying to relax because that's what you know. I'm not saying that's what everyone does. But sometimes giving your mind something else to do can also help you relax, such as reading. And um, let's see. Oh, yeah. I do want to put these two points down here. People sometimes think of reading itself as a stressful activity. But if you read about something that you're interested in, that will make the reading experience better. I think a lot of people are used to reading like textbooks, you know, stuff that they have to read. This would be something that you want to read. And, you know, just make it light, and it, reading on a regular basis can reduce stress. Which leads into the next thing. Improving sleep. So, this first part, um, it's, it basically talks about people of different faiths and religions will sometimes read their religious text right before going to bed, and they sleep really well. And that's great, but even taking religion aside, if you read before bedtime, it calms your mind. It helps you block out a lot of the stuff of the day. You're able to sleep longer and more restful. So that's just a good tip to have. And then some people actually think that you can plan out your dreams by whatever you read before going to bed, inspiring what you're going to dream about. So if you want to have a hot and steamy dream, you read that before you go to bed. If you want to have something a little more light, you read that before going to bed. So you just oh, never know. Right. <laughs> or yeah, some people be like, Ooh, I shouldn't have read that before we went to bed. <laughs> and this is the one, thank you for mentioning Orson Scott Card earlier. Reading can make you more empathetic because it allows you to have that experience of walking in someone else's shoes. And it'll make you see similarities in yourself in someone else who on the surface may look very different from you. And it exposes you to different cultures and philosophical ideas with an emotional impact. A lot of times when you're reading, especially fiction, 
like she was pointing out, you get exposed to these different ideas and beliefs, and it's not coming at you. It's not like attacking you. You're just you're just getting to see it, experience it, and be able to kind of relate to it in a different way. And you get that from reading. I know some people say you also get that from like movies and things like that. You do, but there's still something that happens in the brain with your synopsis when you actually read words on a page and they go into your head. It just intensifies it, and that's where that emotional impact comes from. And number 10, it's just good old entertainment. So for every good movie or TV show out there, there's at least 100 books about the exact same thing. And that TV show or that movie was probably based on a book. And this is a shameless promotion for my t-shirt that I'm wearing. It's an original design called Source Material. And it basically says that books inspire all of these things up here. Books inspire movies, video games, fashion, all kinds of things. So moving on from that, but in this digital age, books have the potential to be the least expensive and most portable form of entertainment. You can take books anywhere on your phone, exactly. I have, I have more books than I can read in my lifetime between my phone, my iPad, and my Kindle, and they're all cheap, inexpensive. So it's a great form of entertainment, especially for people who maybe can't afford to you know, go out all the time. It's a great form of entertainment. So here are the plus five reasons, and this is my little book where I'm telling you about, his name is Carney. So five more reasons why Carney loves books and why maybe you should consider reading. So number one is variety of platforms and genres. And basically what this means is you can read about anything. If you want to find out about underwater basket weaving, there's a book for it. <laughs> I mean, you can read about anything. And you also don't have to be like trapped. I, feel, I think a lot of people feel like if they read something, it's going to be a really long, drawn out tome filled with words that they've never heard of. But that's just not true. There's short narratives, long narratives, there's visual narratives. There's all different kinds of ways you can enjoy books. And then there's the variety of mediums, which I've kind of alluded to already. Um, Ebooks have kind of changed the face of reading, but it's more than just that. There's still the traditional print books that you can get, audio books. I now have seen something called motion books where you, there's like, have you seen it? I've seen a little bit about it. Yeah, like it's something new. They're putting in like apps and things like that where you could be reading a story and there might be a, 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 like a soundtrack in the background and maybe a digital image that comes along. It's, it's the wave of the future with books. And then there's social engagement. Now, we, we, most of us can agree that reading is a solitary activity. It's you and a book and you're reading. But you can use books as social engagement. There are book clubs that you can join. There's all kinds of online things. But more than that, just talking about books. Whenever you know a book hits the bestsellers, everyone wants to know who's read that, but did you read the book? I didn't. You know, it, it's a way to have social engagement. And then you can indulge or enhance your interest. Again, like I said, if you want to read a book about underwater basket weaving, you can do that. Typically, if there's anything in the world that you want to know, you can find a hundred different books on that subject. You just have to look for them. And for people who, who say that they don't like to read, they may just not, may have not read something that's based on their interest. If you love muscle cars, you can find books about muscle cars and read that. You don't have to read the classics if you don't want to. And then the last one is exclusivity. This is one of my favorites. I'm up here doing the presentation, explaining to you why you should read. And no matter how much I say that, someone is still gonna say, I'm not reading. They're just not gonna do it. So the people who actually do make the conscious decision to read will always be a little bit more exclusive. It's a small group of people compared to the global community who either unfortunately live somewhere where they can't read and then the people who just choose not to read. For all of those people who say the movie's better and they're like, I don't care <laughs> because they read the book and the other person didn't. So being a reader does make you a member of a very exclusive population who reads when other people don't. 
So that's my presentation on five, 10 plus five reasons to read. Um, if you're interested in my sources, I came up with all of the options on my own, but then I went online and found a couple of articles that kind of backed up my research because I thought I was just making this stuff up, but apparently other people agree with me. So here are three articles. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> so here's some articles that I came up with, and this is a little bit about me. Any questions? All right, thank you. <laughs>